My name is Anne Mullally. I'm a physician scientist. Um, my lab is based at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, and I also see patients at the Dana-Farber uh, in Boston as well. Dr. Mullally's lab is studying the role of mutant calreticulin in patients with myoproliferative neoplasms. We've been trying to understand the mechanisms by which uh, mutations in a gene called calreticulin cause a disease called myeloproliferative neoplasms. This has been a team effort um, from my lab, postdocs, uh, research technicians, medical students, uh, undergraduate students, all working very hard on this problem. Since these mutations were described in 2013, really the burning question has been how could mutations in a gene like calreticulin, an endoplasmic uh, reticulin chaperone protein, how could these cause a disease like myeloproliferative neoplasms? Um, these mutations were identified in an unbiased manner. They were identified by whole exome sequencing. There have also been very um, uh, specific and interesting questions that pertain to the nature of the mutations in calreticulin. So all of the mutations occur in the last coding exon, in exon 9, and although more than 30 different mutations have been described, they all result in a plus one base pair frame shift that generates a new reading frame and generates a novel C-terminal peptide to the protein. So what the function of that new C-terminus is and how that contributes to the oncogenicity of mutant calreticulin has also been of particular interest to many people, including us. My group has four major findings related to mutant calreticulin. The first is that we, we find an absolute requirement for the thrombopoietin receptor MIPL um, for mutant calreticulin to tr transform hematopoietic cells. And we find that this requirement is very specific and cannot be fulfilled by another growth factor receptor, for example, the erythropoietin receptor. And this is in contrast to JAK2V617F, which can interact with any so-called type 1 cytokine receptor. And we think this requirement for MIPL explains the disease phenotype or the characteristics of the disease that patients with, myelo, with calreticulin mutant myeloproliferative neoplasms get. So they typically have a very uh, elevated platelet count and they have megakaryocytic hyperplasia within their bone marrow. So that's the first major finding, an absolute requirement for MIPL. The second thing we find is that uh, MIPL signaling is activated and specifically the JAKSTAT signaling pathway is activated. And again, we think this is important because it explains the mutual exclusivity of calreticulin with other MPN causing mutations, for example, the JAK2 mutation and the MIPL mutation, which are typically mutually exclusive with calreticulin. The third major finding is relates to the C-terminus, this novel C-terminal peptide that the mutations generate in the mutant calreticulin protein. So we find that that um, C-terminus is absolutely required for the transforming capacity of mutant calreticulin, but alone it is insufficient. We also find that there's no specific domain within the mutant calreticulin protein, or there's no specific sequence within the C-terminus that is required Rather, it's a general property of the C-terminus. And this specific property is the electrostatic charge, and specifically the positive electrostatic charge. So we find that the positive electrostatic charge of the novel C-terminus is required for the oncogenicity of mutant calreticulin. The fourth major finding is that we find that mutant calreticulin binds to MIPL, the thrombopoietin receptor. And we find that this binding interaction strongly correlates with the transforming capacity of mutant calreticulin, suggesting that, that it is required for the transforming capacity of mutant calreticulin. So in aggregate, we think these four findings uh, help explain how mutations in calreticulin result in the development of the disease um, MPN, and we also think they help explain some of the biological features of the disease that I outlined, the isolated high platelet count, the mutual exclusivity with uh, other mutations. So we're interested in um, 
in uh, mutant cholera reticulin, I think, as a therapeutic target. I'm a physician. The major motivation of what I do in the lab is to try to uh, use our understanding for better therapies. We're interested in it as an immunological target also, as I mentioned, and we're interested in trying to push forward the mechanistic understanding uh, further also.